calling. Um, good afternoon, I think, to many people. Maybe good morning to a few of you. I'm Sue Gander with the Electrification Coalition and really excited to have you join us for a virtual tour, a test drive, if you will, of our new EV policy showroom. Um, we're going to take the next hour or so just to give you a little bit of a taste of some of the great tools and resources um, that we've got pulled together in this new showroom, um, walk you through them, um, and uh, I hopefully uh, interest you in coming back for more um, and um, really hopefully um, provide you all with um, some really good insights into EV policy making and support your work, um, whether that's at the, um, the local, state, or, or maybe even federal level. So with that, I'm going to just um, say a little bit more about the Electrification Coalition, go through um, just a little bit of the framing, and then we've got um, some of the policy team here to do some uh, walkthrough um, of, the, uh, of the tools themselves. So I'm going to um, just start with introducing the Electrification Coalition. We are a national nonprofit, um, nonpartisan organization. We are committed solely to the purpose of promoting the electrification of vehicles on a mass scale. Um, we are motivated by this um, through the um, national and energy security benefits that come from reducing our dependence on oil. Um, we've seen um, how uh, over 91% of our transportation is still dependent upon oil and um, the large cost that that has to our economy, to our environment, um, to our public health. Um, and uh, really excited to just show here on the slide a number of ways that we've been working on um, achieving greater EV adoption um, through things like the American Cities Climate Challenge, through accelerator programs, um, through the Climate Mayor's well, per the Purchasing Collaborative, um, and some new work around freight electrification, um, as well as our work on state EV policy um, and federal policy. So. Excited to have you join us and, and learn a little bit about our work as well as we as we do this tour. So let me turn to some housekeeping. Uh, just a few things to orient folks. Um, please do sign in on the in the chat. Um, we want to have everyone kind of get a sense of who's here. Um, first, last name, organization. Um, we did switch this to a um, around from a, a formal webinar to a meeting. So um, you're going to see a lot of folks um, on the line there, and um, excited to have so many people joining us. We are recording this presentation. Uh, that will give us a chance to share this later uh, and um, welcome you um, resharing as well. Um, it'll include the slides that we have. If you want to submit a question, we're gonna have a Q&A session at the end of um, each tool that we present. Please use the chat function for that and we'll try to get to as many questions as we can. For any kind of technical help, you can go ahead and chat uh, you know, specifically to EC Tech uh, that's one of the participants listed here, and um, Annie will help you with any problems that you're having on the technology. Uh, and then finally, um, for any kind of follow-up, um, you know, we're here to answer your questions, receive your comments, um, get your suggestions. Um, you can contact Brad Nelson, who you'll be hearing from later, policy analyst on the team. Um, his email is there. So um, with that, let's go ahead and get rolling. Um, I want to um, just uh, share with you a little bit about um, a really exciting uh, new effort um, at the EC. It's our Electrification Coalition Business Council. We launched this, I think, the same week or maybe the, you know, a couple days before we actually launched this policy showroom. Um, and it's just a great example of how we are continuing to build our connections across the supply chain uh, of the electric vehicle industry. Um, this is now a collection of 20 different businesses we work closely with um, in an advisory way. Um, they help us strengthen our policies and our programs, and um, we're really excited to support their work um, in electrification as well. So um, we're thrilled to have them as part of that. I think a, a number of them are joining us today as well. Also wanna give a big shout out to our EC policy team to help make who helped make all these tools possible. Um, everyone from our national director, Brent Prochaska, um, to um, some of the interns that aren't listed on this slide here. We've got a team of about 10 folks um, working um, day in, day out um, on EV policy. You're going to be hearing from a number of them um, uh, throughout the course of the webinar and uh, really excited that we've 
built up this team um, just over the last year, um, a new effort on the part of EC in the recognition that um, in addition to the great programs that we've launched on the ground um, over the last decade, uh, we can bolster our activity um, and bring those efforts even further um, through policy mechanisms um, that we've been working on um, pretty consistently as well. Um, the next slide gives you a little bit of sense of what that means for us in terms of the policy ecosystem. Um, at the end of the day, we are interested in having um, as many stakeholders come together, um, support policy adoption that moves the EV industry forward. Um, we do that through a state EV policy accelerator that I'll speak to in a minute. Um, we've got implementation programs on the ground that we're advancing that help build that case for, uh, for EVs. Um, we also have a rapid response um, uh, program where we uh, provide, you know, kind of on the spot, uh, quick turn responses to questions around um, both EV technology as well as EV policy and, and support uh, folks at the state and local level um, in their efforts. On the next slide, um, you're going to see a little bit of what that means on the state policy side. Um, we've identified uh, five states and added on a sixth now where we are providing deep dive support um, in um, the shape of legislative, regulatory, and other um, policy efforts um, at the state level. Um, so the states there, if you can't see them, are Nevada, North Carolina, uh, Pennsylvania, Michigan, uh, and Virginia. And then we've added on Illinois as well. So um, those are some of our target states. We, we do work in states across the country um, as well. So this is a little bit of a snapshot of the showroom. We'll walk through each of these pieces. Um, what we're going to feature today uh, is a dashboard um, that we're really excited about with uh, interactive tool capability. We have a funding and financing guide. We have a uh, what we call an EV roadmap roundup um, that walks us through, um, uh, I think it's 17 or so uh, state EV uh, roadmaps um, and gives you the highlights of those. And then we have a compendium of EV tools and calculators. Also um, part of the showroom are some things we released earlier. Um, it's uh, the Achieve Toolkit that we did in uh, partnership with uh, Plug in America, Forth, and the Sierra Club. It's 50 different policy actions uh, for all, uh, um, all levels of um, state government um, and some local efforts as well with great examples. Uh, there's also freight electrification, white paper, and then a uh, ZEV, uh, um, Zev State Scorecard um, that we put out a few years back um, to kind of amplify the uh, complementary policies that go along with a, a Zev program. So there's our website there where you can check it out if you haven't had a chance to do this. Before I um, go into the um, dashboard, um, just want to note that we've got a poll we wanted to um, ask you to um, complete, which um, is our chance to find out kind of where you're coming from. Uh, you know, basically, you know, what part of the EV stakeholder um, world do you um, do you reside in? So if you have a chance to fill that out, um, I will uh, share the results of that um, after after presenting this slide. Um, so just a little lead into the uh, EV policy dashboard. We're going to have Nick Nigro from um, Atlas Policy present that. His team were the ones that uh, pulled that together for us. Um, amazing partners that we've been working with um, over. Uh, several years now. Um, it currently includes 10 uh, leading policy categories. So within these categories that are listed there on the slide, there's some individual policies. And we picked those to really represent where we've seen a lot of activity, um, you know, to reflect where we think the most questions might be coming from, um, including some things that are more in the category of emerging policies, um, an example of that would be clean fuel standards, where we have just two states that have adopted that, but um, many states are looking at that option. So that's on the list, not because it's um, the most popular, but because it's getting a lot of attention. Um, and then we do include EV fees on there um, to monitor what's happening in states across the country. Um, Nick will give you the details on, on uh, more of that. Uh, and just as a heads up, our next step is to expand this set of categories with um, the very important topic of freight electrification, it's something we work on um, very closely. We see a lot of opportunities in the medium and heavy duty sector um, and are excited to bring, uh, bring forward more policy options at the um, state level on that as well. So with that, um, if the poll is set, we can go ahead and see the results. If not, we can just move on to the dashboard. Oh, there we go. Um, we got 
the voting in process. Give it maybe a 10 more seconds, maybe just to get a taste of things. All right, why don't we go ahead and uh, go to the results, which I think I'll be able to see. All right, so, and hopefully everybody else can see these as well. Um, nice mix here. Uh, state government officials, um, kind of our target audience for this. So glad to see that's the uh, a large chunk of things. Um, also folks in uh, non-governmental organizations um, who are key stakeholders in these efforts, private sector folks. I love that, that mix there of those. Welcome to the one local government official. Glad to have you on board. Um, carry these messages back, will you, to your, your colleagues. Um, and, and EV enthusiasts who I, I think is somebody who didn't fit in the other categories because I, I hope that we're all EV enthusiasts um, academia um, uh, working in, in, as a student. So um, thank you all again for joining us. I'm gonna turn things over to Nick and we'll uh, take it from there. Thanks a lot too. Really appreciate the opportunity to be here and to work with you all on this important project. Uh, so as Sue mentioned, my name is Nick Nigro and I work at Atlas Public Policy. Uh, we are a firm based in Washington, D.C., do lots of work in the transportation electrification space. As I was seeing the people uh, share their names, it's nice to see a lot of familiar uh, names, I guess. No, no faces at the moment, unfortunately, but nice to see a lot of familiar uh, people joining us today. So, so Atlas's role in this, in this work was focused on <clears throat> building these dashboards. Uh, and so we made two simple, one simple and one advanced dashboard on policy tracking. Um, importantly, I want to highlight where we're getting the data from, because I think that's going to be something that people are going to be asking, or at least you're, you're curious about. And I want to start by giving credit to the U.S. Department of Energy, uh, who does an incredible job tracking public policy activities, laws, and incentives around the country for all alternative fuels. Uh, if you haven't checked it out yet, I encourage you to check out the Alternative Fuel Data Center off DOE's website, uh, because that is in, in fact where a lot of the laws uh, and policies that we've incorporated in this dashboard are coming from. We're directly sourcing from there. Now, the DOE's website uh, has a great scope, but it doesn't capture everything that we care about here in electric transportation land. Uh, and so Atlas supplements the AFDC's database with some other policies that, that don't quite fit into the scope of, of, of what DOE is tracking. And uh, and so combined, the sources uh, for the dashboard here are both the AFDC from the Department of Energy and Atlas Public Policy through our product, EV Hub. So I'm going to, in, in a moment, I'm going to share uh, my screen and show you this, the simple, the dashboards. Um, but before I do that, um, as Sue mentioned, we have the high, um, high level categories of, of policies that we're tracking. And so, but in addition to that, we're also tracking, you know, how to categorize those individual policies uh, so people can get greater detail. We provide links directly to the policies themselves if you need more information. So this is really gonna be a tool. So without further ado, I'm gonna share my browser and maybe if somebody at EC could just give me a heads up when you can see it. Cool. That's good. Okay, so this is the landing page for the policy showroom. We didn't make this, but I give credit to the designers. It's very nice. Uh, and so if you were to click on the policy dashboard right here, uh, I'm just gonna jump ahead. Uh, and this is what where you'd get to is the landing page for the dashboard. Uh, and this is the simple dashboard I mentioned. Uh, given that I have a really big screen, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see it more easily. Uh, and, and essentially all we're looking at here is a summary of all the policies that we've tracked by state. Um, you can see that the states are shaded. Uh, darker states have more policies in place that fit the categories that, uh, that we're tracking. Um, and as you hover over an individual state, you can see the breakdown of those policies. So uh, California, no surprise for anyone working closely in electric transportation knows that um, they are leading in, in the number of policies, uh, including many electric uh, utility charging and vehicle incentive programs, 
uh, charging incentives, uh, et cetera. So you can just hover around the, the country and, and see what's going on. If you are interested in just getting a quick look at what, what's, what a particular policy looks like without going into the, the detailed dashboard, you can do that here with this filter bar. So if I cared about annual fees, who's got fees in place, I filtered there. You can see uh, the policies in place there. And if I was interested in incentives like charging incentives and vehicle purchase incentives, I can just click those two and I get myself a map. This can be very convenient for you if you're making a presentation uh, for, uh, for, your, for your audience. Uh, you can just take a screenshot of this and, uh, and put it in. Please don't forget to cite the uh, policy, uh, policy dashboard uh, for your source there. Okay, so now uh, if you keep scrolling down, you'll see uh, viewing the full dashboard. And so when you click on that link, uh, you're taken to uh, the main dashboard, which is a much de more detailed look at the, po the 10 policies that we're tracking. And so what I'm gonna do is just kind of take you on a tour of the dashboard itself and then do a couple of demonstrations and we should have plenty of time for, for Q and A. Just move the uh, speaker thing here so I can see, great. Okay, so uh, similar to the, the simple dashboard that we have, we still we start with the giant map of the United States to see who's who's out in front and who's who's falling behind in terms of enacting public policies related to electric transportation. Uh, same gradient as, as we saw previously, zero to one to 54 policies. Similarly, if you're hovering over the different uh, states, you're gonna get that breakdown uh, that reflects whatever filters are being shown at the time. Um, we've got filters at the top here. So if you wanted to just drill into one state or another, you can select a state. You can also look at filtering by time. So you can filter by uh, the, the date in which the policy was enacted. And then finally, you can, similar to the previous dashboard, you can select oops, policies that you're interested in. If you ever set this thing up and you set up some filters and you're kind of lost at uh, where you were, you can always hit reset view and that will take you back to the default uh, view. So as I keep scrolling down, what's the advantage of this dashboard as opposed to the one we were just showing you is uh, the breakdown. You get a lot more detail. And so uh, we've got the different policies broken out by the number of policies in place. So for each policy category, you can see oops, uh, 146 policies related to utilities, charging incentives, uh, vehicle purchase incentives, et cetera. And as I hover over, you can see I'm getting uh, a, a description of what those policies mean. Uh, according to uh, our, our documentation, uh, along with the number of states that have enacted it. So as you can tell, it's possible for one state to have more than one policy of the same type. Uh, similarly, in, on this side, you've got that breakdown by the number of states. And then here is uh, effectively the detailed table of all the policies that we've tracked and identified uh, by state. Uh, you can sort it by title, you can sort it by enacted date, by the policy category. And then here I mentioned earlier, we break those policies down into individual uh, descriptions so that you can get a better sense of what kind of policy it is. Uh, so, and I'll show you a couple examples of how to use that as a tool uh, in a moment. And then finally, we've got a description uh, where possible this description is pulled directly from the Alternative Fuel Data Center, uh, the USDOE's website, where, where uh, along with uh, the, the title and the enacted date, the policy category and policy is something that Atlas has added for, uh, for the showroom here. Where it's a policy that DOE is not tracking, this, it's something written uh, by Atlas ourselves. So I mentioned earlier, we have links directly to where the policy is coming from. So if it's a policy that is from the AFDC, you can see, uh, as I hover over here, you can see a link going directly to their website. Uh, you can also see policies where we're getting the source from uh, either a state law or some other uh, direct source, uh, and those links are, are provided as well. And then finally, uh, we've got our policy over time. And so you can uh, see clearly there's some momentum here in terms of the last couple of years in enacting more policies uh, related to electric transportation. And just like most of the other visuals, when I hover over here, I get a little insight. Uh, and this is the breakdown by time of year in case you're interested uh, in, in that. So I want to give just a couple examples of how to use the dashboard to do some quick analysis to help answer questions. So let's say I was interested in vehicle purchase incentives. All I have to do is select that box and I scroll down. I see all the states where have purchase incentives in place. Keep scrolling. 
and then you can see here are all my detailed uh, policies. And I could sort by uh, the type of the policy, so the break the breakdown, and you can see uh, policies, including those that had expired or ended. Uh, some of these policies have, you know, either been repealed or they've expired. They might get renewed again later. It all kind of depends. We're trying to be as comprehensive as possible. So some policies in the database are not active. Um, but then as you keep scrolling down, you can see we've got incentives for medium and heavy duty vehicles in addition to light duty vehicles. While most of the policies in place in the US so far are still focused on passenger vehicles, we're getting more momentum uh, with the medium heavy duty space. And then you can see here, finally, the breakdown of how, where the policies and incent vehicle incentives have been enacted over time. Then if I was just interested in exploring what's going on in a state, um, we've done a lot of work in the state of Washington lately. So if I just filter for Washington, uh, I'm seeing the detail of all the policies that we've, that we've logged in the state of Washington. Question you're probably asking yourself is, well, you know, this is great for a snapshot. How often are you guys updating this? Uh, so for Atlas's product EV Hub, we, uh, which is the underlying source of, of this data, we're updating this at least on a monthly basis. Uh, in some cases, we'll update it in real time, depending on what's going on in the market. Uh, but at about once a month, we go through and make sure that we're not missing anything that's out there. And, you know, this is a manual process. And so if there are errors or missing updates that you notice uh, should be added, feel free to either reach out directly to Atlas or, or to the Electrification Coalition so we can turn around and, and update. So we always wanna make sure that people are relying on the latest information. So that's our tour of the dashboard. Uh, I think we still have some time for questions, Sue. I'm happy to keep sharing or I can stop sharing for now. Yeah, we have about 10 minutes, maybe a little less for um, any questions. Uh, if you do have a question, go ahead and put it in the chat. We'll get to it. Um, I just want to uh, kind of re reiterate um, the, the comment that um, Nick made about, you know, kind of updates um, and, and emphasize this is an enacted policy. So what you're going to see here is things once they, you know, become law, become um, rules. Um, and, um, you know, really just, um, you can assume when you're on the dashboard, it's roughly, you know, accurate or current as to, you know, the month that you're in, but, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna vary a little bit here and there. Um, okay. so we have, I was just going to say, Sue, I've got some, I've got some questions that have come into yeah. the queue. Um, Excellent. If I great. So first question, and this is actually going to be a, a, a tandem question for the both of us. Uh, so does EC slash Atlas have any plans to build on the state uh, EV policy dashboard aiming to figure out the impact these policies have on EV adoption? Very interesting question. Uh, Sue, what do you think? So um, I love that question. Uh, ultimately, we want to know what, you know, where, 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 where do we go to get the mm -hmm. best bang for our buck, if you will? And um, um, those are things that we currently track separately. Um, we, uh, we have registration um, as well as in some cases some sales data that we have that, um, uh, you know, it, it's a bit of an art to, as with any kind of policy, to kind of see that causation, but you can certainly see correlation um, as is a little bit evident in, you know, just looking at this map here in terms of California, Washington, Oregon. Those are the states with the three largest adoption levels. Mm -hmm. um, they also have a high penetration across the board of policies. Um, but kind of digging down underneath that, um, that can be a little bit more challenging, but that those are some things that we're looking at in terms of um, trying to get a little better, a little more granularity, granularity on the, um, you know, on that correlation piece. Um, and there's, uh, Nick, if you wanted to add to that from any work you've got going on, that's sure. good. We've got maybe one or two other questions we can go to. Cool. Yeah. So, Sue's right. It's, it's hard to actually establish the, the clear relationship. Uh, there's a couple of examples historically that people like to talk about the incentive in Georgia when it, when it expired, sales cratered. So clearly there was a connection, that sort of thing. Um, it, for Atlas at EV Hub, uh, with our product, we do have the sales data. We have we also post-registration data for a number of states. We, we hesitate to establish correlations between the effects of policy and, and, um, and deployment of the technology. Uh, 
we try to more serve the, the audience and give them the data so that they can do the analysis themselves. But I think it's a really interesting idea. And as the market gets a little bit more stable and, and, and su sustained, uh, I think those kind of analyses will have, um, I, I think they'll have a greater impact on, on, on how people look at the market. Uh, so, okay, so I see, uh, this is a shorter question. I see a share link option at the bottom of the page, but it doesn't link to a policy report, just the main page. And so, yeah, that this is so. This is uh, Microsoft's um, Power BI link. That's actually something we don't really control, unfortunately. Uh, so I can't actually give you a, a, a clear answer why it's set to your homepage, to EC's homepage. But that's just the kind of default. Uh, I, I don't think there's a way for us to customize that, unfortunately. Nick, there's um, a question about uh, Hawaii being on the map. I know it's in the data. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought it was also on the map. Yeah, so it's there. It's, it's, it's a little hard to see with yeah, the blue. Yeah, it might be a little hard to see. <laughs> yeah, we, don't, we, we could never forget our friends in There's Hawaii. There's a lot of great stuff going yeah, on. A, yeah, so. for sure, for sure. And hopefully uh, a lot of work trips there someday again yeah, soon too. Um, okay, so one more question. Are there policies that provide incentives for renewable energy friendly grid, i.e. policies that would incentivize charging or V2G at times that provide flexibility? to complement available availability of energy from variable renewable energy sources. Wow, that's a mouthful. Uh, wonderful question. Uh, and yes, there's lots of policy in place to encourage charging at the appropriate times for the grid. Uh, I would start by looking at charging incentives uh, here and, and seeing what we have. Um, I don't know if that captures all of the policy that, that's in place, whether it be uh, electric vehicle rates and such, um, but it should capture quite a, quite a lot of those. Yeah, and maybe just to add on to that, um, really like where that question is coming from. Um, and I think this is, a, particularly when you're speaking of V to G types of incentives, um, and, and a lot of that can be at the regulatory um, level as well. Um, that's a, a great interest of ours. Um, and indeed, the EC is partnering with our sister organization, SAFE, to host a vehicle to grid roundtable. Uh, in early April, um, and that's going to feed into a, a white paper that we're putting together. So um, stay tuned for kind of more thoughts on that. Um, and that's something that, you know, we'll take up as a, maybe as a comment or suggestion for something we might look into a little bit more detail, um, if that's possible to move that into um, this dashboard. So um, I think that might just wrap up and exhaust our questions. Uh, There's some more that have flowed in here. I'm not sure if we have time to answer them. Yeah, I, I don't know that we do. So later. we might just okay. go ahead and if we have time at the end, we can we can. Sounds good. That. I'm not going anywhere. Nick's not going anywhere. Um, Thanks again for the opportunity, guys. Awesome. And I think I'll just go ahead and, and, and turn it over to Andrew, who is our next presenter, Andrew Linhart. So. Nick, uh, great. Uh, there. Um, I am going to take a few minutes to talk about our finance guide. Let me bring it up. Um, can you all see that? Yes. Good. Great. Thank you. Um, so uh, just a little bit about the finance guide, and then I'm going to walk you through some of the major sections of it. Obviously, can't get into every uh, top of, type of uh, finance that's out or funding that's out there right now. Um, this is not exhaustive. It is supposed to represent... Uh, most of the major sources of funding um, from across the country. Uh, it does highlight a number of local programs, federal, state, um, and so forth. So uh, from the EV uh, policy showroom, uh, you go down to the EV uh, funding and finance guide. I'm just going to walk everyone through it because it is a couple of steps, um, but it's pretty easy to do. Uh, this will bring, bring you to a download page, which brings up the... Uh, program itself. Here's the, uh, excuse me, the report itself. Um, and I'm just going to walk through a couple of the main points here. I uh, want to point out that the, the table of contents here for, for ease of use is all hyperlinked um, and allows you to go through this. So I'm going to talk just really kind of briefly about some of the major uh, funding and financing options for electric vehicles and a few of the highlights of funding and financing for uh, EVSE um, uh, charging infrastructure uh, and such. So 
Uh, you would click on uh, whichever program that you want to take a look at here. I'm going a little out of order, so uh, just following along with me. Uh, these are, uh, this is the section on uh, funding programs for electric vehicles. You can see um, there is some information in here on vehicle to grid. I know we just had a, a question about that. So some of this might be helpful as well. Um, and just, you know, we start with the federal uh, programs up there. A lot of these I know, a lot of you know, um, obviously we can't go through every single one, but the surface transportation block grants, uh, the formula grants, uh, US DOE programs, of course, uh, you know, uh, US EPA as well has programs. Uh, the DEER one, uh, which I know is an especially popular one uh, for replacing old diesel uh, school buses. Um, and obviously, of course, uh, we would want to see all of the funding for these programs increase uh, as well. So uh, just a bit there on the funding. Um, and then uh -oh, I'll click on it now. <laughs> the next one. Uh, is the finance, uh, sorry, go back into that for electric vehicles. Um, so you can see uh, over here, we run through a couple of specific uh, state programs on the loan side. Uh, California's Clean Vehicle Assistance Program, uh, Nebraska's Dollar and Energy Savings Loan, uh, New Mexico has an alternative fuel program. Uh, so you can see that it is a, a wide variety of states um, and, and some localities um, have funding and financing uh, in place for these things. Um, you can see just as an example on the local side, this Greensboro, North Carolina uh, transportation bond that allowed for uh, uh, purchasing uh, and financing of, of uh, electric vehicles. Um, so that is the funding and financing for EVs. Uh, moving into the funding and financing for uh, infrastructure, uh, here is uh, a few of the programs. Again, um, some of these will come as no surprise to a lot of you. Again, you're on here. Um, we're big fans of that program. Uh, Build grants, um, uh, CMAC, uh, bus and facility grants. Again, um, I, you know, we obviously encourage everyone to uh, look through this in detail and follow up with specific questions. Uh, but I think this kind of gives you a sense of the variety of programs that are out there. Um, I personally like to point out uh, a lot of these uh, airport grants where we've seen some real uh, movement towards electric vehicles. Um, and so just a few of the highlights there. Um, moving forward into the financing for infrastructure, again, there are a number of state programs and local programs that are moving towards this. Again, all of these programs and the federal government as well needs more uh, financing. I think it will come as no surprise to the group on here that uh, pretty much every program uh, gets uh, oversubscribed uh, pretty quickly at every level. So I think that shows the demand that's out there uh, for all of this. Um, on that. Um, so just a little bit uh, on, on the uh, financing here, uh, as well as loan guarantees. Uh, and you can see a little bit uh, on that. And then lastly, um, I do want to show the appendix here. Uh, I think this is a just a great kind of snapshot of uh, all of the different programs into a nice uh, chart. Uh, that it makes it very easy to look uh, to find what you're looking for broken out by the agencies, uh, by state programs, uh, VW settlement funds, utility programs, et cetera. Um, so that, so I think, uh, you know, when you put all of this together uh, with the rest of, of these tools, you'll, you'll get a very uh, comprehensive view of the funding and financing uh, capabilities that are out there uh, for state local governments, um, and even for some private sector, uh, excuse me, and also for the private sector uh, to help move towards electric vehicles. So with that, um, I think we have a few minutes for uh, questions. I'll be happy to do uh, that as well. Let me stop sharing. Great. There we go. Questions. I do not see any in particular on financing, which I think is okay. Um, if you all, when you get a chance to dig through this um, and have 
uh, more detailed questions and such, uh, please uh, feel free to reach out. We're always uh, looking forward to working with all of you. So uh, not seeing any questions on the finding. Yeah. finding and hey, Andrew, maybe one thing you can expand upon a little bit. Sure. Just I, I'm a big fan of these, um, <laughs> um, uh, you know, the ways that we can move things forward is, um, uh, can you say a little bit more about the um, opportunities for building out EV infrastructure within rural areas? I know that's been an issue we've kind of looked at a bit, um, you know, maybe highlighting some of those. Well, I, you know, it's, it's obviously been a big uh, concern. We, we have some uh, examples uh, in here. Unfortunately, I don't have them pulled up right now. Um, but, you know, I think this is one of the issue, one of the places where we need to make sure that uh, funding and finance is equitably distributed uh, between urban and rural areas. Um, you know, a number of the states that we work in have, um, have huge rural areas that need the infrastructure as well. Uh, we know that we need to work with the utilities on those processes. Um, so there are some great examples uh, in here. Um, and sorry, I don't have that example pulled up, but um, there is a, uh, a whole host of programs for rural communities and we expect to see that, um, that kind of funding increase. We know that it's been uh, mentioned by uh, a number of congressional uh, and the administration, uh, a number of congressional leaders in the administration on making sure that, uh, you know, rural and uh, other areas are not left behind in the transition to electric vehicles. Great. Uh, we got one other question came in. Uh, how might this guide support low income consumers of EVs? Yeah, great question again. I think this goes hand in hand with the uh, rural question as well. Um, uh, communities that have generally been uh, not in the forefront of this uh, transition to electric vehicles. Um, again, a lot of these programs can go towards rural, they, they can go anywhere. Um, uh, I, I think one of the things that we need to make sure happens is that there are carve outs for rural areas. Um, you know, a lot, especially on the uh, formula driven, go to the population centers. And we know that we need to cover all areas with the infrastructure, um, talking about the rule again. And then in low income communities, we need to make sure um, that money is set aside for those communities. Uh, there's been a number of uh, initiatives spoken about for that, but any of the funding in here can go to, you know, obviously within its program can go uh, to, to uh, a lot of different uh, communities. Obviously, there's a lot more work that needs to be done to make sure uh, the funding is used in the best way. Yeah, and just to add on to that, we do have a section that has some specific examples of where states have um, targeted, for instance, some of their tax rebates um, um, and, and use income um, delineators, you know, to really specifically drive that funding. So there's a few examples out there, but as Andrew said, you know, much more needed. Yeah, and I'm sorry, I just remembered one other example of that with the low income uh, incentives that's uh, hopefully, keep my fingers crossed in Virginia, um, there is an additional carve out for um, uh, low income con uh, consumers, uh, purchasers as part of the EV incentives package that's moving through the legislature. Um, so I think that that is a, you know, a possibly really good example uh, moving forward on that. Not in, in law yet, but um, staying optimistic and keeping our fingers crossed. So I think uh, that is a time um, and I uh, thank you all for the questions. Again, please feel free to follow up with more, uh, more questions. Um, and I'm gonna turn it over to my colleague, Brad. Thank you very much, Andy. Uh, my name is Brad Nelson. I'm a policy analyst with the uh, Electrification Coalition supporting a variety of different programs. And so I'm gonna be showing today the uh, uh, tools and calculator section uh, that uh, we have been working on it. Uh, now, so to, to reach that, there are either two, one of two ways from the main page, either the EV policy showroom, uh, you can go through the, how everyone else has been doing it, or directly to the EV tools and calculators section. And so this is the EV tools and calculators uh, clearinghouse. Now this is a curated list of vetted resources uh, that we believe are very uh, helpful to analyzing uh, how to effectively transition over fleets, um, where to find policies that are supportive to EVs, uh, guidance on charging, and a variety of other uh, different areas. Uh, there are approximately 30 
uh, tools uh, and calculators that are listed here. You can just scroll down by pressing load more to find additional ones. Um, and if you want to search for a specific one, you can just press right over here uh, and type them in. Um, so if you want to uh, say, look into shared mobility benefits calculator, um, you can print it, press here. You will often have another link that you then have to press into. Um, for, for instance, in this, uh, this one, if I wanted to look up Denver, Colorado, uh, this, uh, this resource uh, provides an opportunity to know, okay, if I want to reduce emissions by 50%, what the breakdown would be by uh, carpooling, shared scooters, and so on. Uh, you know, electrification uh, provides a variety of different uh, options. Um, there are also, uh, you know, a large number of other resources that we can go through here uh, that are available. The Electric Vehicle Cost Incentive Impact Tool. Um, this is uh, one that I find very helpful and very interesting uh, once it comes up, which might take one second. Yes, let's go. Now this can give you a rough sense, and I know this was asked before about the impact of different policies. Say I wanna set uh, a BEV incentive of $3,000, what the potential impact would be on, you know, costs uh, per kilogram of CO2 saved, the number of vehicles incentivized, and you know, you can adjust the budget, total number of incentives uh, provided. Um, this is a great resource for getting some of that basic economic uh, analysis um, for, you know, to give a rough sense of any policy that you want to implement for EVs. Um, there are a variety of other ones here that are also uh, helpful. Alternative Fuel Station Locator um, and the Alternative Fuel Data Center provides us from the DOE. Uh, here you can look up by, you know, fuel type, advanced filters, usually what I go by, fuel type, station, and you can figure out by state and city uh, how many chargers are currently available by what type um, to a very specific location. Uh, so moving on, the, some of the other great tools that are available here, our Turn of Fuel uh, uh, data center also provides, if you want to look up very specific uh, alternative fuel vehicles uh, by any specific type, uh, this resource uh, can also provide that. Beyond tailpipe emissions uh, by the fueleconomy.gov, you want to know your exact emissions by the type of vehicle in your location. Um, and this is uh, one of the most, I would say, essential resources for policy analysis and what Atlas also uses uh, to provide that dashboard, this uh, alternative fuels data center. So if you go to laws and incentives, as many of you are familiar, and you can look up by state, you can get a sense as to um, what the incentives are for alternative fuel vehicles in that location. Um, quickly, these last two tools, I think one of which is from Atlas uh, right here. They have an EV charging financial analysis tool. Um, it is extremely in depth, but if you want to understand the full, full cost, you can download the Excel tool. Uh, I find it uh, very helpful if you're working with a specific local fleet and they want to try and figure out the, the, uh, the cost and whether, whether it's going to work for them or not. And lastly, uh, of, of some of the tools I wanted to show here, one tool that I think many are familiar with, if it'll eventually pop up, is the Greek tool by NRL. Um, I know many of you have probably seen in reports where there is a breakdown of the full uh, emissions life cycle costs. Uh, it is most often that this is the model that they're using, the Greek model, which you can download um, from this resource. And so that provides, a, I'd say, a quick overview of what is available. Um, through our uh, EV tools and calculator clearinghouse. Um, I think uh, if, if there's enough time, I'd be happy to answer any questions people have. See any questions? Great. So this is, no, maybe, I don't think, oh, oh, how often this is updated? Great, sorry, I had to scroll down to that one. Um, so uh, we will be updating this, I, you know, I think as often as we find additional tools. I don't know if there's a consistent pattern for this one. 
Um, there are already a few that I, I think we should add. Uh, we will be updating as soon as anything comes up that we think is uh, useful uh, to the community at large. I don't yeah, know. maybe just a shout out if folks come across tools that they think we should consider including. You know, we'd love yes, to hear that. Absolutely. All right. Well, uh, with that, I'd be happy to uh, uh, send it over to Will, who will be providing uh, an overview of the EV roadmap roundup. Thanks, Brad. Uh, hey, everybody. My name's uh, Will Dreyer. I'm also a policy analyst at the EC. I'll be walking us through uh, our EV roadmap roundup tool. Um, and uh, so our EV roadmap roundup tool is a uh, resource that we designed to compare and contrast the uh, uh, most recent state EV roadmaps um, and ultimately help policymakers and others um, uh, help identify what steps uh, states have taken so far in the development of these roadmaps and also provide um, information and, and um, uh, recommendations for developments of future roadmaps um, to be uh, more comprehensive uh, and complete. Um, so just like all the other resources, we'll be going to the EV policy showroom, um, clicking on the EV roadmap roundup link. And that'll bring you here um, where you can type your name and your email in and, and it'll send you a download link for the Excel file. Um, you can reach out to uh, myself or, or Brad um, if any issues arise, but that'll bring you here um, to our file. Um, and this is comprised of uh, uh, three, three components, um, a high level uh, introduction and summary, um, a, a sources and reference page, and then also the actual um, comparative tool. So the summary page uh, is a collection of the common themes and observations across um, all of the roadmaps that we reviewed, uh, which she was right, there's 17 of them currently in there. Um, and uh, we've also included, you know, high level recommendations and uh, 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 well, that are based on the observations that we've summarized here. Um, for example, um, medium and heavy duty, uh, you know, buses and freights uh, uh, vehicles are, I think, only mentioned uh, in one of the 17 roadmaps. You know, so um, obviously that is a, a, a of growing interest um, for, for folks. Um, throughout the, the EV ecosystem. So, you know, in the development of, of future roadmaps, important to, important section to include. Um, similarly, the um, equity uh, uh, component, you know, there is a lot of uh, equity discussions in uh, most of these roadmaps, um, but they most lack, you know, um, direct policy actions. And so, you know, um, uh, we call out things like that to uh, identify and, and things that need to be built upon as, you know, new roadmaps uh, uh, are developed. And so on the uh, sources and reference page, you can see all of the uh, links to, direct links to the roadmaps that we uh, took a look at for this analysis. Um, we've also included a, a few links over here um, that uh, are state level, or excuse me, our um, local level or also national level uh, roadmaps that we've worked on. Um, we're also working on um, another EV roadmap with um, the District of Columbia. So, um, you know, Electrification Coalition has, has worked a lot uh, with these local, um, with EV roadmaps in general. So um, those, there's additional links there to uh, reference. Finally, uh, we have the actual uh, comparison tool. Here you can compare uh, or create custom comparisons across up to five of the uh, 17 state roadmaps at any time. Um, and it helps you identify, um, you can see what targets each state is, has kind of set up and compare and contrast those. Um, also seeing the key components, um, I'll dive into a little bit more walking you through. Um, but you can, uh, just for example, let's go uh, compare um, Minnesota with um, California and Colorado. So you'll select the states in this orange box here that you want to compare, and each of the columns will uh, populate uh, the information. And so here you can see, um, you know, uh, here are the established EV targets that each of these states have laid out in their roadmaps. Um, or, uh, for example, um, let's say I'm interested in, in understanding, you know, how uh, have these states set up um, or addressed electrifying their state fleets. And that's one of our components here. Um, you'll, you can scroll down after picking the three states you want to see. Uh, oop. And uh, sorry, I'm blown up here. So you can get, get in close and just kind of 
messing up the navigation, but you can see here in row 22, um, you know, dedicated fleet electrification programs um, gives a, an example um, or a quick summary of how that EV roadmap um, set targets for, for this piece of, um, uh, for this program or, or component of the EV roadmap. And so there are a um, handful um, of, of those kind of components that you can compare and contrast across these roadmaps. Um, and that's basically it. I'm open to, to any questions um, uh, you, you might have. Uh, I just got a question. If we are planning to develop roadmaps for all states in some major cities, I think we work on roadmaps uh, on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, right now, we're, we're working with the uh, District of Columbia on making theirs. Um, I don't know if we have any other in the pipeline, but you know, always uh, happy to discuss um, working on those with anyone who might be interested. Have a couple more seconds, see if anyone else has any more questions. All right, seeing none, I think I'm uh, tossing it back to Sue. Thanks everybody. Great, thanks Will. And um, really hope folks will get a chance to dig in and explore all of these tools in more detail. Um, we're a big fan of, of EV puns and, and kind of auto puns. So I'll just say, I hope we didn't give you whiplash as we kind of sped through all of this um, over the last hour. Um, but there's just a rich set of information. Uh, and um, you know, we, hope, we hope you will take a look and we hope you will give us some feedback, continue those questions, ways that we can make um, these tools more helpful, more relevant for your work. Um, really see it useful um, in the, uh, in the uh, weeks and months ahead. Um, we're really encouraged by what we're seeing um, from the manufacturing side, the commitments um, to EV adoption, uh, really excited by um, what we're hearing um, from the new administration and the new Congress. Um, it was just a hearing this morning on the infrastructure bill where, where EVs were, were brought up um, you know, um, um, several times I'll say as part of the future of our infrastructure. So, um, you know, just excited to be engaging with you. Um, I want to I want to give a shout out for yet another tool, uh, if I could. So I was just up there on the screen uh, moments ago. But um, wait, you know, that's not all. I feel like a late night infomercial. We have yet another tool um, that uh, EC partnered again with Atlas um, to help produce. It's our dashboard for rapid vehicle electrification. Uh, this is our colleagues, um, Matt Stevens-Rich and others at the EC um, who developed this drive tool. It's an amazing thing and it's gonna be out there for you to make use of um, uh, for fleet analysis. It covers light, medium, heavy duty fleet. Um, and it's really about looking for that total cost of ownership and emissions comparison so you can help make decisions um, around, um, you know, moving your fleet forward uh, in, into electrification. So there will be a webinar, you know, kind of similar to this, uh, March 4th. There's a link there and uh, we can send that back around as well. Um, really um, encourage you to check that out as well because um, we're excited for that, that tool that's coming, coming soon as well. And uh, last but not least, we will just um, give uh, you again a reminder. Um, if you have questions, suggestions, comments, uh, feel free to send those along to Brad. Um, we, uh, he's very excited to get a lot of emails. Um, so keep, keep him busy, please. Um, you know, let us know what you're, what you're finding as you work through the tools. Um, it is something that we wanna keep, uh, keep alive and well. Um, and, um, a second um, showroom, uh, I don't know if we're gonna call it that, but a second um, set of tools that we are developing now um, uh, is focused around advocacy measures. So we have a EV uh, advocacy toolkit that we are beginning to put together as well. And I think that's probably gonna be of interest of many of you as well to kind of complement this uh, policy guidance. So lots more to come. Um, really appreciate your attention here. Um, really um, appreciate the the full team effort here uh, in pulling this all together and um, uh, drive carefully y'all. Thanks a lot.